Okay, now I'm ready to start turn number two of the Legend of Drizzt board game, adventure number one. This is my first time ever playing through this adventure. All right, so we begin our hero phase, and we can move and then attack. We can attack and then move, or we can move twice. So we have this uh, hypnotic spirit on our tile one square away. So let's see what our options are. I'm not familiar with Drizzt. So let's see, okay, with Icing Death, which is an at-will power, we can attack one adjacent monster. Twinkle can attack one adjacent monster. Cloud of Darkness, which we probably don't want to start digging into our, our utilities and our dailies just yet, but let's see what we have. So this one you use when a monster is within one tile. Use when a monster within one tile of your hero would activate, okay? Use at the start of your hero phase, place your stance token on this card. Yeah, this is a new mechanic for me. This didn't exist in Castle Ravenloft, so I'm not quite familiar with this stance thing. So while your stance token is on this card, whenever you use an attack power, you can move your hero up to two squares before or after the attack. And then Lone Draw, move your hero up to his or her speed and then attack one adjacent monster. So I think, all right, I think I know what we'll do. Since we have all this unexplored edge, I can just move to the unexplored edge either here or here and then attack. So that's what we'll do. So we're going to move, let's say we'll move over here and we're facing the hypnotic spirit and then we're going to attack it using our, I think we'll just use our Icing Death. And if you roll an 18 or higher, then it does an additional 1 damage. That's quite nice. Boy, where were these guys in Castle Ravenloft? These, some pretty good stuff here. So we get a plus 6 on the attack. Hypnotic Spirit has an AC of 14, so we need to roll an 8 or higher. <laughs> and my Castle Ravenloft luck continues. I always roll bad when I roll for myself. However, the expert combatant, you can make an additional attack during your hero phase. That's incredible. That's almost like rolling with advantage. Not exactly the same thing, but... Uh, five? is <laughs> I've missed twice. Are you serious? Uh, let's see. What was that attack? Six and five is 11. Yeah, I missed twice. Just my luck. <clears throat> okay, so... We did not use a healing surge, obviously. We moved, and then we used our attack action. Uh, we did not get a treasure card because we didn't kill anything, and we are on an unexplored edge because I fully expected to kill this uh, hypnotic spirit. <clears throat> so we will be exploring. So let's go ahead and draw our tile. Now we're going to have two monsters going at us. This one's a black triangle, so we are going to have an encounter. Okay, so we got a black triangle. And let's draw the monster for this tile. And we got a water elemental. So I was, uh, I kind of, I, I did see a, somebody else play through this game and it felt to me like these were one of the wor one of the not so great ones to draw because they have two hit points. And the monsters in Castle Ravenloft with two hit points were always the ones I hated the most. <clears throat> so I'll place the water elemental on the mushroom stack. So we're just going to say we got a, a Wii, a water elemental. We have no blessings or conditions. We do have an encounter. Uh, there's no villain. The hypnotic spirit is still around from last turn. And now we also have a water elemental. So both of those will activate. But first, we have to deal with our encounter. See what we get. Attack each hero. So there's only one hero. And if uh, it's a hit or miss, so that's... I like these types of things. They're straightforward. None of that. If it misses, it hits stuff from Castle Ravenloft. So it gets a plus eight. 
And of course, I rolled an 11, which is a eight, uh, 19, which is more than my AC. So I get hit. Taking me down to six. And now the monster, the hypnotic spirit will activate first because it was the first one out. Discard that. And so if it's within one tile, it is, it moves to the closest hero's tile. Okay, so, so it's, I think the way to play this, even though it's adjacent to me, it's not on my tile. So I think it's going to move mushroom stack to mushroom stack and then attack me. And it's going to get a plus six on the attack. So let's see how we roll. 14, of course. 14 and six is 20, so it hits, doing one damage. Taking me down to five. All right. Now the water elemental is going to activate. If the water elemental is adjacent, it's not, so we skip that. If the water elemental is within one tile, it is. It moves to the closest hero's tile and attacks each hero on that tile with a surging wave. Now again, monsters, according to the rules, move uh, bone pile to bone pile, or in this case, mushroom stack to mushroom stack. Obviously, this mushroom stack's occupied. So I'm just going, I get to choose where I want to place it, and I'm going to place it adjacent to me so that, um, you know, come my turn, I can attack it without moving. And now it's going to attack with uh, a surging wave, so it's going to get a plus eight. So I'd say it's probably going to hit, so it needs to roll a seven or lower. Okay, well, for once, we got luck on a low roll in our favor. Eight and three is 11, which is well below our armor class, so the water elemental missed. All right, and I believe that's it for turn number two.